Hello and welcome back. This is part two of the spin indexer build. Now if you haven't seen part one where I build the body of the spin indexer, um, there'll be a link in the description there. So in this video we're going to be building the spindle uh, which goes through the center here. And I've got this 50 millimeter round bar, so that's about two inches uh, thick. And it is plenty long enough to be used here as well. So at the end here, we're going to be putting a ER40 collet. And then it'll be turned down in the center to go through the hole in the center there. And then at the back here, we will have some kind of retaining ring uh, that will clamp onto here. And that'll keep it all nice and tight in the tube here. So I made um, this ER40 collet chuck for my lathe a couple of videos ago. So what I'm going to do is use some of the dimensions here to work out how much we need to leave sticking out the end and then what portion we need to turn down. And this project was a little bit delayed because uh, this is a long piece of steel and I couldn't bore out the centre uh, without some sort of support. So I had to build a steady rest for the lathe so that I could continue on with this project. And if you want to see how I built that steady rest, there will be a link in the description as well. So here I'm taking some measurements from the collet chuck that I built in one of my other videos and going to use those measurements on the bar here. That's um, about 40 millimeters from the end and there is a little bearing that goes in here so we need a little step for the dust cover and that's around about uh, 10 millimeters. Now I want to work out how long I want to make it and to be honest I'm just going to use the whole bar here so basically we just chop the end off in the hacksaw and we'll use the whole bar. And while that was actually chopping off in the hacksaw I was drawing up a plan and this is where I made a mistake which I'll talk about a little bit later. So I've got it up in the lathe and I've got the steady rest on there and we're going to work on the back end first and basically we're going to put a center in and then turn down the diameter to size. This is just mild steel and this turns very very nicely and you just get a whole bunch of chips on the floor like that so it's a little bit messy but you know it's easy to cut and I was sort of coming through here and I was going down to 42 millimeters I was going to stop a millimeter short so I could finish it off and then I worked out that I had made a mistake it sort of fits in there and it is a little bit sloppy in there as well so it was supposed to be down to 43 millimeters and I had written 42 on the plan so there's a bit of a fist of frustration there. So I sat in the driveway and I was watching the road to see if Marty and Doc Brown would turn up in the DeLorean so I could go back in time and make the part again and after a couple of hours I thought well that ain't gonna happen so maybe best to go back in the garage and see what we can do. So first thing I wanted to do here was go and change the plan so I don't make this mistake again. So that's from 42 millimeters to 43 millimeters which it should be and of course you know when you're turning that down you stop a little bit more than that and then slowly go down to size. This is ASI 52100 steel. I didn't want to use this and that's why I used that other bar in the beginning. This is very hard steel, hard to machine, a very nice finish on it. Uh, and I'm cutting this off in the grinder because the hacksaw would just take far too long. Probably take a couple of hours to cut this bar in the hacksaw.
so we start it again and turn the outside diameter down these chips uh, look blue and they're hot and I'm running the lathe slow and I'm taking light cuts so we're taking about 0 0.2 of a millimeter what's that eight foul for each pass to take it down from 50 millimeters to 43 millimeters so there's a lot of very slow passes here to get the diameter down to size that blue area at the end that's the little step for the dust cover that we're going to put so I got down the size and I'm just giving it a bit of a clean up on the tape the finish was absolutely fine so I just gave it a quick run with the tape and then we're going to test fit in our body and that went on pretty good I know it's very close so I left it at that and then I wanted to start on boring out the center hole so the center hole needs to be 33 millimeters as I have a 32 millimeter collet so the biggest bar I can put through is 32 millimeters now just like the outside diameter this is kind of tedious as well very slow going drilling the hole working my way up to a 25 millimeter drill bit just going slowly there's a bit of a chip there sitting on the bearing I wanted to remove that I didn't want that to fall into the bearing and start going around the steady rest there And then we start boring out to 33 millimeters. You know, that's eight millimeters of very slow boring. You can see the big long chip coming off there. And that's a very long boring bar as well. I was happy with that. Took it out of the lathe and we're doing a test fit in here. And this actually fits in very, very nicely. So it's like a nice machine finish. So I'm happy with that. So now we put it back in the lathe and in the steady rest and we dial it all in. And this is probably the best dial in I've ever done. That needle was not moving at all. We clean up the end as tradition. And I'm going to chuck a center in here because I'm going to cut the thread on the outside for the collet nut first. Now I was just trying to clean the rust off. This is an old uh, sacrificial tool so I couldn't take much off here. So it was just a bit of a clean up. I didn't want to get down to lower than the minimal size for the collet nut. And here I'm cutting the recess for the threading tool to go into when we're doing the threading on the end. And then we start our threading process. And this is a scratch pass, maybe a little bit deep for a scratch pass to be honest. And we test out the threads and they look good. So we're all good to go. You know the drill, down, out, back, in, down, out, back, in, and so forth, until you get to the finished size and the nut will screw on there. And now I'm starting to take out the center with a small drill and then working my way up to the 25 millimeter drill. And then of course onto the boring bar and that boring bar is long enough to reach where we've gone and from the other end and I check the size and that looks good and because I can't check all the way down the bore I've made up a little tool thing that has 32 millimeter piece of steel on it and that fits in there and matches up with the other end so there's no problem here we start to cut the eight degree taper for the collet and again we're just sort of running this slow and taking small cuts
And then once I get that out to the right size, I finish it off with the tool post grinder. Give it a couple of slow licks. I mean, this is sped up and this is how slow I was going. So I was just using a drill to turn the compound slide in and out nice and slowly. And just running the lathe slow here. Clean it all out. Put some bearing glue on the collet and a test. You can see that it's there's a bit of a gap in the middle, but it's touching at the top and touching at the bottom. Now that could be the collet, I think. And then test out a end mill in here. And I get about, it's about two thou of run out. So what I do is I take that off and I test it out by putting the dial indicator inside the eight degree taper. And I'm getting about two to three tenths run out. So I'm happy with that part. And I think the run out is mainly in the collet or it's in that end mill. Here I'm marking out an area for the holes that I'm going to be putting in here for the pin tool so that we can tighten up and loosen off the collet nut. And then I go over to the mill, make sure that it's vertical. And then we drill a six mil hole here for the pin spanner. And I actually turn that 90 degrees and do the other side. And then I'm just take the edges off. I was going to make the dust covers, but I need to melt some aluminium for that. And it is raining, so I decided to make the pin spanner instead. I'm just cutting out a 50 mil hole here and a piece of five millimeter flat bar. And then I sort of use the other pin spanner that I made before and just sort of uh, freehand it here to make the sort of shape that I want. Use the grinder to cut the bigger pieces off. And then that piece is out. And then I go off to the belt grinder and just tidy it all up on there. I couldn't get that area in the belt grinder, so I just used a bit of emery tape inside the drill and cleaned that up. And I'm just welding the pin on the end here. And give that a bit of a test out, and that actually worked really good. So now we're just doing a bit of a fit up. And just testing that pin spanner out. And that works beautifully. The next step is to make the aluminium dust covers and I'm using some ingots I uh, made earlier here from other parts of engines and stuff that I've melted down. We fire up the foundry, put our aluminium in there and we just get that meltdown. Now I didn't film pouring the aluminium but the one at the bottom there that's the one we're going to use for our dust covers and I also made some aluminium round stock using those round stock molds which you'll see later in the video. Now I thought this was going to be a problem getting it out of the can here so I just sort of cut through that tin with the grinder and surprisingly this came apart easily so I was very very pleased with that. Now I've got that in the lathe, I've got it in the four jaw and I dialed it all in as best I could because I don't have a lot of meat on the outside to take the outside down. So basically here it's just doing a bit of a clean up and then that's pretty much the size. I need to do some trepanning to put the groove in the front there for the dust cover to go around the body of the indexer. And anyone that has experience in trepanning will know that that's not a proper trepanning tool. But there are some videos out there 
which I saw actually after I did this, so it was a bit of a learning curve for me. Now the tool got broken off actually in here, so I had to cut out the inside a bit there so that there's less tool pressure. Um, that gets taken down anyway, which you can see here, where I do the final cleanups. This surface here is where the bearing is pushed up against the body of the spinning dexter. Now while I have it in the centre and supported, I just wanted to cut through here. You can probably cut this off, but I just wanted to add a tape there as a bit of a feature. And lastly we drill and bore out the centre to the correct size. So this is a press fit onto the spindle, and the other almost identical part for the back is a slip fit on the spindle. Before I part it off I just give it a bit of a clean up with some emery paper. And we finally cut the part off. So I assembled it up and I worked out where the locking screw goes onto the shaft and I'm just taking this down, it's around about 0.3 of a millimetre, so reducing the diameter by about 0.6 of a millimetre. That's just to stop any burring going on if I have to change from the aluminium screw to a, a metal screw. Here I am giving it a good old clean up with some acetone to get all the grease and stuff off it so that it can be blue. And I'm using this Perma Blue, I think you can buy that in the States as well. And basically just, I mean you've seen plenty of videos where people blue things. Now I normally use hot blue uh, by heating and quenching in oil but for this part I didn't want to do that because I didn't want any distortions or anything going wrong with it. So just used a bit of the uh, chemical blue in this instance. And then we take that off to the water to stop the reaction. This is going to be the locking screw and it's using a bit of that 25mm home cast aluminium. Clean off the end and I'm basically just cleaning up the face of it. I think the casting's about 26 millimeters, so that allows you to do a bit of a clean up and get 25 millimeters. Now I like to do my knurling while I have the part in the tail stock, so that's what I'm doing first here. And then we move into turning down the rest of the body for the M10 thread. And we measure that up and that looks good. So now we do the threading. And I didn't show it on camera, but I actually chopped off about 10 millimeters on the end as well, where the center went into this piece. And now we do a bit of assembly, so a bit of CRC or similar to your WD-40 that you use. The bearings go onto the spindle, and that slides in there. And then the back bearings go onto the spindle as well, and the dust cover goes on there and that spins absolutely beautifully. There's the locking screw, so that goes in and locks nicely. And then we put on our nut at the front. I don't know how tight that locking screw will go, but that is why I put those holes in the spindle for the pin spanner, so that it can be locked with the spanners. So that pretty much concludes part two of this build. In part three, we'll be working on the back end there where we'll have a locking collar and also the indexing plate and the pin for the indexing plate and maybe a handle as well so it can be turned around. And then that would pretty much uh, complete the project. If you like my videos, please click on the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I do release new videos, click on the notification bell. I hope everyone has a great day and once again thanks for watching.